Good evening. Welcome to our show, Ghosts Are Near, where we discuss and actively explore various aspects of the paranormal. I am your host, Keith Johnson, the co-founder of New England Anomalies Research, and with me is Sandra Johnson, our co-founder. It's so good to be back. Yes, great to have you co-hosting again. It's been a while. And you will recognize my two guests for this evening, Cody Ray Desbian and Satori Hawes. Hey, thanks for having me. Glad to have you both here. Thank you, thank you. You can actually speak to people again. I know, right? This is great. It's so great. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? You can see people's mouths moving naked. now. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's great. Yes. So, what we're discussing tonight, our topic is actually what you see here paranormal couples. Couples who are real couples in real life, but also explore the paranormal, which we've been doing for a number of years, and you've been them, doing for some time us, too. Yes. yes. Okay. Us, them. We're, <laughs> going to, we're going to trade off experiences, <laughs> and we welcome questions from our studio audience as well. So, them. yes, exactly. So, <laughs> ask away. But I wanted to ask you, you two. Uh, well, of course, we've interviewed you both before about uh, your career investigating the paranormal together and uh, being on Ghost Nation and yeah. such and going to various places. Um, how do you explain to people what you do? <laughs> it's an interesting topic. I mean, I, I remember when I was in school, I mean, yes. I've heard a lot of stories of, of, you know, people when they were getting into this uh, at school age, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people would call them weird and strange. Uh, but at least with myself, I don't know about Satori, I thought... I was called Weird and Strange. Really? Yeah. So I, I had the total opposite but of that. But that's years before you two met, right? Yes, yes. absolutely, yeah. Um, I, I got, you know, all the kids, I, I was like the cool kid because I was investigating ghosts and, mm -hmm. and people would come up to me that I never thought, you know, would be interested in this stuff and start telling me ghost stories and, and things of their own. So it, it was like a total opposite effect and I think that really... Um, helped out, uh, you know, reaching out and making friends with people. Um, now, um, you know, if I'm wearing a shirt that has anything to do with the paranormal, mm -hmm. uh, it's the same situation. The, the people that you think would be the least interested in something like this are the people that have all the cool stories. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it, it's really interesting and we find that uh, wherever we go, it seems like there's always somebody that reaches out to us if we're wearing a tap shirt or a Ghost Nation shirt or something like that with some interesting story to, to talk about. It actually hasn't become that difficult now that paranormal is so popular yes. you know, in the mainstream. Yeah, right. Everybody has a story. Everybody's been involved in some way. I think mm -hmm. that's helped a lot when we explain what we do. Everyone's like, oh, you're ghost hunters or, or you know, something fun like that. And they get it. And yes. It makes it easier. Right. I, I agree with, with, uh, with what you were saying, though, Cody, because it always seems like all the good stuff happens to the non-investigators. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I mean, it, uh, nothing, I mean, I have had a lot of experiences, right. but it's like the people that come up to you that have the really, like, wow, that really happened? <laughs> exactly. Cool. I agree. And likewise, when investigating, uh, you, you two can probably agree that most of the, the best stuff that we've recorded or something like that has been when we haven't been investigating. It's when we're having a conversation between each other and catching up on our normal lives and yes. all of a sudden Absolutely. you get a voice in the background and when you're out there asking the questions, sometimes it's, no pun intended, dead quiet and you don't get any answer. Uh, so yeah. I think it works both ways for sure. Right. Well, my brother Carl, his first experience with EVP, we didn't even know the term EVP as yet. No, we were still teenagers and uh, they my brother and some friends did happen to be discussing uh, paranormal topics and cult activity and such and in our basement at home and that's when uh, we discovered our first EVP captured on audio tape. Um, he just happened to be discussing it, played the conversation back and all of a sudden there's something, you know, it's a, like a slow motion voice yeah. saying, help me, you know, but, wow. you know, we play it in regular motion, speed it up and it does say, Carl, help me. Wow, that's Help. so interesting. You know, and uh, so that, that's, that's totally by accident. Yeah, Plus, nobody exactly. was asking questions or anything like that. Yeah, when you least expect it, that's when something's going to happen, it seems like. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have another friend who's um, out west, and she was, she was doing an EVP session. And she, at the end of it, she wisely thanks whoever she's talking to. Thank you. Yeah. Got this Class A EVP that says, 
you're welcome. <laughs> you <know? laughs> that's great. Very kind. Yeah, that's great. Right. But yeah. you know there is this, it's undeniable, there's this unseen realm yes. all around us that Absolutely. does exist. Yes. And, and uh, I think there's less and less people that actually deny that that does exist. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. See, when I was very young, you tried not to talk about this because you, well, I was ridiculed anyway, but uh, you find out people are doing that. It's a sense of bravado. You know, yeah. I don't believe it. I, I'm, I'm not going right. believe in that stuff. But uh, you find out, talking to people, they do have experience. A lot of people have experiences they didn't want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And I'm sure you both agree that with this um, being so out in the open now, a lot of more people are talking about it. They're not afraid to talk about it. Right, which is great. Um, you know, we always give people different outlets because, like you said, sometimes uh, talking in front of other people is is uh, still a sensitive thing for some people when they're, when they're talking about this type of thing. So we always try to give different outlets where people can reach out either privately or, uh, of course, in person if, if you ever reach out to us. But um, it does seem like more people um, are, you know, being very open to this stuff. Unfortunately, um, it seems like a lot of the people today are... Um, are you know attributing everything to be more negative than positive mm -hmm. uh, and I just think that has to do with you know pop culture currently and the the uh, Hollywood movies coming out and things like that uh, so you know we found that we've been helping a lot more people just by talking to them mm -hmm. uh, not so much investigating and and you know looking for this stuff but just calming them down and and having a conversation and and, and sharing what we do uh, and just explaining what we do helps calm the situation down uh, by leaps and bounds uh, mm -hmm. believe it or not and um, you know just just teaching them a bit about what actually happens and what we've experienced uh, and personal experiences, it makes them feel a lot better, which is which is great. It makes mm -hmm. us feel really good, you know. And you were both exposed to the realm of the paranormal and paranormal investigation at a very very young age, and and uh, I know you had experiences when you were very young. And you started investigating, Cody, when you were very very young. Yes, I did. And I um, did. story, of course, we know your your background. It was in my family before I was even. A born before I was even a thought. So right. It was something right, exactly. that my family. And I remember that too. I, yes. I do remember that. Yes. You know, I remember when you were this big. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, and um, so I think that's that's very different uh, from the way it was, say, a couple of generations ago. Oh yes, and, I bet. Uh, but how do you find? And I know we've had our experiences with uh, clients and being in on location with uh, people who have called us in for help, but. Um, how would you say it differs, you two being a couple, working together, you see, as opposed to just going in by yourselves? So I will say that, um, you know, since I started working with Satori, mm -hmm. uh, it seems like we definitely balance each other off. And, you know, she's Good. more of the um, people person. I mean, I love talking to people, but when it comes to an investigation sense, yeah. I tend to, t you know, stay on the side of technology right, and, and right, documentation exactly. and things like that and she's much more of a people person and he's saying able I to talk a lot that's <laughs> what he's saying well I mean uh, communication skills are very right. very valuable exactly we'll call them communication skills I like that better. <laughs> very, very very valuable in this field exactly so so there is a great balance uh, when it comes to that mm -hmm. and uh, when we're arriving uh, at a location that balance definitely comes out in shows because she just kind of goes her way, I kind of go my way, and then once the investigation starts, we kind of meet in the middle and um, and you know do what do what we do. Uh, the other thing we have noticed is that, and I don't know if you have noticed this, but we've kind of since it started happening, we've kind of looked more into it, and it seems like um, you know of course everything is energy, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But true. it seems like when when two energies have a connection. Uh, it seems like it's almost like flipping on a light switch sometimes mm -hmm. and it just kind of you know opens up um, it's, it's hard to explain it can just kind of opens everything up and uh, makes things I don't know a little more successful when it comes to investigating for some reason at least that's what we found when we work together we definitely have better results um, than when we're not working together and mm -hmm. I think it's just uh, the energy I mean we all have uh, we've all experienced feelings that you know if you ever walked into a room and you know something bad is going to happen, mm -hmm. uh, and then all of a sudden it happens. You kind yeah, of have right. that that sense, and I think it's just the energy in the room. You just kind of sense it, and I think 
uh, on the same playing field as that. I think when, when two energies uh, that you know kind of fit together uh, the right way, it kind of just works. And mm -hmm. uh, especially when you're dealing with a field that's full of energy, I think it uh, it benefits the investigation. Um, from what I, from my opinion, I think it absolutely does. We've gotten much better results working together than not. Right. You being a couple, male and female, yeah. you go into a place. Um, say you're, you're working with a family, it's a husband and wife, or you know, you know a couple there. How does that? Um, I mean, do, do you find it an advantage being a couple yourselves? Because we have, we yes. have found that. Yes. Uh, talking to the clients, I, I think absolutely. I think I think it. Um, it kind of gives a, uh, a commonality uh, mm -hmm. between the clients and ourselves. I mean, because we've done a lot of cases just on our own, uh, just walking in and, and, and doing it on our own. And we find that, um, that you know, you, you, you get a better understanding and get them to open up a little more um, when they can relate to something. And, you know, especially with families and couples alike, it seems that since we have a connection together when we go into a place, we give off a more welcoming energy than yes. just a lone individual yeah. coming in with a bunch of equipment. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I'll interact with the children, I'll talk to them, um, I'll get along with the, the husband and wife or couple, and we'll just try to kind of try to find similarities and get to know yes them. right right exactly and we found people have responded to us that way as well mm. they, they seem just the opposite of us <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one that comes in and starts setting up all of the equipment and keeps the one that's that's talking and playing with the kids and but it's great you still balance each other off which is which is which is good right you know? exactly now I don't know if you two have ever run into this I, I would guess not but um, you, you tell me if I'm wrong. Okay. Sandra and I, years ago, we've had this happen a couple of times. We've gone in as a couple, you know, and sometimes we're with our group too, or with another group. Um, but we'll have the client come up to us and say, and usually it's a, it's a female client who says, yeah. so which one of you is the psychic? Which one of you is the witch? You're the witch, right? You're, you're the psychic because she's the female. Either the psychic or the, or the witch. Not, not the, the witch. Uh, that part. happened you one time. That, that was more years ago. Yeah, well, that's what I'm talking more about. More recently, is, it's which one is the psychic? psychic. Yeah, which one is yeah. the psychic and things. So you're the psychic, right? And, and, uh, do, do you ever have that? Like, uh, let's say, well, uh, uh, Satori must be the psychic. Yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely. We definitely have people that said that, especially with all the movies that are coming out right now. Yeah. Uh, seeing a couple together like that, of course, they, uh, you know, Story gets a lot of questions like that. I get, know? are you a psychic? Are you a witch? Are you, I don't know, everything you can think of, I've probably yeah. been called, you because know. Because you have to have one on your team. Exactly. Your team yeah. isn't complete. Yeah. You don't have somebody like that. Right. And it can't be the guy. It has to be only the females is right. what I'm seeing. I'm getting asked all the questions and they're not asking, are you, you know, are you involved in some way? Are you a medium to Cody? So. Yes, right. Right. Yeah, well, yeah, it usually is a, it seems like that's the stereotype for females, uh, right. at least when it comes to the paranormal is, you know, they're probably the one that is the medium or the psychic, you know? Yes. And not I, the skeptic. Well, yes, mm -hmm. not the skeptic. I've been in situations where, uh, of course, sometimes uh, a male and female client, if they're a married couple, will react differently from each other. Yeah. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. I've seen that too, yes. You know, uh, women seem to have a different emotional level when faced with the unknown, you know, the paranormal. And um, it's, uh, of course, women will react more. They'll seem to be more terrified. But in my experience, women handle these situations better. Yes. I'm talking generally, mm -hmm. generally speaking. Yeah, I would agree. You know, and I've uh, been on cases, um, I can think of one in particular, up in uh, Massachusetts when we came and uh, there was, uh, the husband had just totally closed himself off. Yeah, you know, because in the stereotypical role, he's the husband, he's the defender, right? He's, you know, he's the papa bear, right? And he's against something he doesn't know what to do about. Yeah. you know, he can't handle this. It's something unseen. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's it's a home invasion on an unseen level often. Right. You know, and um, I actually had to talk with this uh, gentleman and get him to come out of himself. I talked very gently until he responded to me because I was another male and I. So I've had experience with this, and I've seen this before, you know, personal experience. So, um, you know, that that was what I was very effective at. You know, yeah, and, uh, that's great. We definitely run into situations very similar to that, and um, and that's exactly what you, it seems like you have to do. Sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't, unfortunately. But all you can do is try, mm -hmm. and um, in the end, uh, sometimes you won't you won't get through to those people, 
and uh, which is okay. Uh, and you just have to pay attention to the people that are, are being affected. It's sad that they have to feel as though they can't talk about it and they have to be yes. tough about it. And well, society, to just, you know, it's, it's a social thing. You shouldn't have to. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know how I think this, uh, a lot of this began, though, with the careers of Ed and Lorraine Warren. I agree. You know, and especially, and that's had a resurgence with the Conjuring movies, of course. You know, everybody knows who Ed and Lorraine Warren were now. And yes. um, they, they, so often they get, uh, their popularity resurges because of different movies and productions and stuff like that. But um, I, I think that's what's done it sometimes. They, uh, We've come in and people expect me to be the Ed Warren and yeah. her to be Lorraine, but turns out she's not a light trance medium like Lorraine was. You know? Right, exactly. Oh All women are clairvoyant, right? Yeah, I can't tell you how many times we've walked in places and, and said that we, you know, we are known as the paranormal couple on social media now because we, we've kind of put ourselves out there that way. And people are like, are you guys like Ed and Lorraine Warren? Is one of you a psychic? Or yeah, you? And right, I'm like, right, right. No, that, that we're, we can't compare ourselves to two other investigators, no, not every investigating team is exactly the same. Right, and right. I think we, male and female, I think we all have that intuition. Mm -hmm. Right, oh absolutely. You know, you, you know the hair on the back of your neck, you know when something's yes. around that's, that's negative or oh, yeah. at least filled with a lot of energy. Right. And on the other hand is drawing energy out of you too. Yep, mm -hmm. I agree. You know, I so. agree. But um, what's some of your experiences about that that stick out in your mind, Sandra, it's coming in and uh, where are Ed and Lorraine Warren, or where are the, uh, you know, the, <laughs> you're, you're the Lorraine, and you, I mean, your eyes don't start blinking or roll up in your head, and you're saying, you know, there is a presence here. You know, I've never known you to do that. So, but some some clients have expected that from us. Well, yeah, but I think they quickly realize that that we're not Ed and Lorraine Warren. I mean, there are certainly parallels between you and Ed, mm -hmm. but I mean, I don't profess to have any kind of um, psychic ability uh, beyond what most people have. I, I'm very, I'm very skeptical. I walk in, to, uh, you know, looking to, you know, find a, a reasonable explanation for something. Sure. I'm not but you're looking also to, to feel a, a spirit, you know. Right. But as far as the people themselves, the <clears throat> flesh and blood people, the clients, you're very compassionate with them. You know, you've been able to calm them down. No, they've no. Been, yes, <laughs> yes, you can. Well, I've, I'm, I'm thinking about a particular case in uh, Salem, New Hampshire, where that woman was, uh, I mean, she was so distraught and overwrought with emotion that she just passed out on the floor. Oh. You, you were very comforting to her. Got yeah. the pictures to prove it, you know, we next to her, helping her and everything. That was uh, that, that, was that was an unusual case. Yes. It was a you know, yeah. inhuman, full blown inhuman case. Oh, geez. But um, and and uh, actual uh, welts were, were forming on her face when she was was laying on the floor. It was right, and she hadn't just gone in and visited the bathroom <coughs> and then, yeah, exactly. You know, so so right I mean, in front of us, we watching. actually saw that occurring. That was yeah, that's a totally different man. story for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. Speaking of that. Um, you, you've run into that, uh, I'm sure, where somebody, I mean, on the other hand, when, you know, somebody is very afraid, they're very distraught, but it might be more of a mundane explanation, situation yes. you're dealing with, and somebody's right. very emotional, very keyed up, and, uh, you know, we always have the story of when we're in Drake at Mass once, and the, an elderly woman who was, shouldn't really have been living alone, but she wanted her independence and her family, oh, yeah. we're checking on her a couple of times a day and uh, our friend Lisa was uh, rocking in a rocking chair and then Lisa got up and it hit the back of the walls that's the ghost I keep hearing you know that was just one example just mm -hmm. one example oh yes how, how do you deal with situations like that well of course you have to deal with it delicately yeah that's uh, what because, I mean because they are um, you know wholeheartedly believing that you know what they're experiencing is a is a spirit you know and when you're, um, in, uh, well, in turn, some people want it to be a spirit as yes, well. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, depending, and like I said, this is when Tori comes in, you can kind of read the entire situation just by the way they're telling you the story. Mm -hmm. And depending on how they react, uh, just like in your case, when somebody is scared of, of this thing, and you find out, you know, maybe they have uh, rodents in their attic or something like that, 
which has happened. We've run into cases with bats that yeah. were making loud noises in the attic. Which is scary um, enough for some people. <laughs> exactly, yes. I don't like bats. Doesn't <laughs> <laughs> have to be bats. So, uh, uh, yes, exactly. So, um, so you have to approach it uh, very delicately and uh, show them. Yeah, I mean, showing them is a much different story than just telling them. Uh, what's going on. So actually bringing them up there and, and, and showing them what's happening. And you know, there are the occurrences where you tell somebody that this isn't, a, you know, from what we found, it's not a spirit. It seems to be, you know, a beehive in your wall or something that can be explained yeah. Yeah. and they will still refuse to believe that it is something that has some sort of logical or, you know, physical explanation rather than, you know, a spiritual one. They want to believe so badly that their house is haunted or that they are dealing with a spirit. Um, and, you know, th that doesn't mean that they aren't. It just means that with their claims we are able to debunk. And a lot of people don't like to take that. Which, believe it or not, that's the situation we've been running into a lot more in recent days. It's almost like having a, a ghost or a spirit as a curiosity that, you know, it's a good thing to have a spirit, you know, and, yeah, and, to, and right. to show it off to, to people that visit your home. And in some cases, it's a money maker for some people yeah. and they want the yeah. spirit to be there. Yeah. And, if, and if you tell them there's nothing here, sometimes that can, that can be a totally different situation that can turn bad as well. But then we find that they just go to the next group and the next group until they yeah, get the answer uh, that they want. You know? you know, group hunting. Yeah, right. exactly. We, we've run into that quite a bit, you know, until yeah. they find somebody who tells them exactly what they want to exactly. hear. Exactly. You know, unfortunately, yeah, that's... I think uh, it's, it's a, a lot of, um, because they see Keith as, as a demonologist and mm -hmm. they want to approach him because he will take care of uh, negative spirits for them. I think we get a lot more of um, maybe not beehives, but people with mental illness. Oh yes. yes. Oh um, yeah. We get a, a whole lot of that, um, and it's it's very difficult to mm -hmm. to deal with people like you said. They want to believe they have a spirit. They don't want to believe that they may have um, some kind of a mental illness that you know where they need intervention of a kind that we can't provide mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right absolutely and that that's a that's a, a delicate situation as well when um when you when you run into something like that thankfully um with the teens that we've been involved with uh there's been somebody that is that's their profession is is dealing with yes that's with great people. to have somebody like um, that on your team yes that's so excellent. um it's always a great contact to have and i always recommend <clears throat> you know um, mental illness is, is definitely out there mm -hmm. and I always recommend that if you're getting into this field uh, yes. especially forming a group mm -hmm. that would be probably one of the first contacts that you should get is somebody that that's their profession and um, and you know we've just been lucky enough to have uh, a couple of people that that are willing to help us out on that level which is mm -hmm. which is great right. that, that's excellent because so you know, know I don't think any team should come close to anything like that uh, and even step foot in a property that, that you know, has somebody that, that unfortunately is dealing with that. Right. Uh, because you can just make the situation ten times worse um, than what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, it's unfortunate, but... I know, and, and many, many years ago, in the, about the uh, early 2000s, uh, we were on a case that, um, and Sandra was not involved in this at the time, there was a young woman that um, she, her there was a history of schizophrenia in her family, oh, and she geez. thought she was—she was, uh, she was sure, she was convinced, she was dealing with uh, somebody that had cursed her. Now it turned out that um, her ex-boyfriend was seeing somebody who had a history of dealing with the occult and everything. Like that. Supposedly, this yeah. young woman had placed a curse on her, so that's why we were there. Right. But uh, she was experiencing this and that, and um, you know. I, I was very, very sympathetic to her, and she did appreciate that, you know, in fact, I, she really appreciated me because I was the most sympathetic to her. But I couldn't cross that line right. and say, I believe you are experiencing this, because, I mean, I tested, I tested, I even tested for demonic possession. She didn't know I was doing it, yeah. you know, but if somebody's generally, you know, like that, they, you know, uh, oppressed by a spirit, you will see signs of it, Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, and I did audio recordings and everything like that, and do I believe she was having problems? Yes, yes. Were they of a paranormal nature? I don't know. Somebody can have different varying degrees of mental illness. That doesn't rule out right. paranormal. It doesn't mean there's no paranormal. True. We simply had to give her our findings that 
we ourselves found no evidence of paranormal. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and um, which is good. Yeah, that's the right answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, we are, uh, speaking of uh, things like that, I know that uh, recently you've uh, been adding to your museum collection. We have. Yes. And yeah. you've been doing that as a couple. Yeah. I know. I know when I. I hadn't heard you have a museum. <laughs> oh, no. great! Well, well, you, you <laughs> guess what? Cody has a museum. Cody Ray has a museum of haunted <laughs> objects, or allegedly haunted objects, objects that have been, you know, involved in certain, you know, situations and everything like that. Not everything's haunted, but they've been involved in situations. Each, each of them has a story behind them. That's right. And uh, recently, they've teamed up and began doing this as a couple. That's right. Yes, I, mean, I remember way back when. Another paranormal couple activity. Yeah, I remember years ago when we first met, um, I had mentioned to you that I had gotten a few things, but now, uh, since meeting Satori, so um, mm. <clears throat> during the whole uh, pandemic situation, yes, yeah. we really turned to, to social media, and that was the way to reach out to people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just a side note, we've gotten so many reports of people experiencing spirit activity when they're doing Zoom calls with people now. Mm -hmm. uh, because, yeah. you know, it works kind of like an EVP recorder. You have a microphone on one end and a speaker on the other, and people would be having conversations on, on either Zoom or Skype or, you know, whatever platform, and getting voices coming out of their speaker. And um, so... That's been interesting. So uh, on, on the other note, we've been paying attention to, to social media and just kind of putting ourselves out there and saying, you know, if you need help and, and you know, you're not in an area, uh, this is a great way to reach us. And uh, it surprisingly uh, just, just started blowing up uh, on, on, on TikTok and Facebook. And, um, you know, it's just been a great platform to reach uh, definitely a new generation of people mm -hmm. um, that, that are on these platforms. And... Um, and just another way to contact people uh, in a much more different way than we used to. And we started, you know, it, it started out as a tiny collection of just people that were terrified with these objects that they believed were haunted, whether they had proven their claims or not. Um, we had taken them off the hands and put them, you know, behind cases and, and made sure they were protected and people were right. protected. And then once we kind of came out about it and started our social media and uh, told people that, you know, we collect you safely. It's, it's kind of a thing we do on the side for people that really need it. Um, people started reaching out from all corners of the world. Um, just telling us that it was, yep. oh, sorry, okay. yeah. um, you know, people kind of reached out to us from all over the world telling us that they, they are dealing with haunted objects themselves. They have been involved in some sort of situation where they need to rid of these objects or just yeah. need advice, and that's where we come in. Um, and then it just blew up into a museum, and uh, now we're going to be traveling with it because so many people were excited. It's kind of an on-the-road museum, right? It is. So everything packs into a, like a 25-foot truck, mm -hmm. and uh, it goes to different um, locations around the country and uh, gets set up, uh, and people can either come and tour it or investigate with, with, with the, uh, the objects. Uh, but it's safely just, educate because yeah, so many safely, people don't understand that, that right. a lot of people want to touch the objects yeah, and, right. and hold them and that's not something we allow by right, any means. Right, because um, your aura can actually mingle with if something's exactly. you know, contaminated. So it's from a distance. We yeah, make sure right. everything's exactly. safe. From a distance, yeah. exactly. Now we know where to send our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it's almost closing up time, believe it or not, but uh, it goes by quickly. Yeah, I do want to ask you, how many uh, items would you say you have in your... Uh, museum now in your collection and over over 300 now i mean we get a box in the mail every other week uh, from somewhere um a lot of a lot of dolls a lot of people think dolls are haunted right now yeah so we have a whole wall of dolls uh in the base that we that we keep everything in uh but stuff from around the world masks tribal uh, items from different cultures mm -hmm. all around the world it's cool. the energy that some of these things hold wow is yes. incredible and not everything is you know we don't believe everything has some sort of attachment to it right sure. right exactly um but there are maybe like a like a top 10 things that mm -hmm. that seem to you know have something a little more than you know, the, the yeah. usual, you know. Well, if you need a uh, room blessing, just feel free to give us a call. Don't give us a call. <laughs> well, I want to thank you both so much for uh, sharing your time and your experiences with us. And uh, obviously, we go on for hours and hours about that. And we will. We'll have you on again. <laughs> Great. And, uh, so, thank you so much. Thank you. Great seeing you again in person. Great seeing <laughs> you, Tori. Seeing you. Great seeing you. Well, guys, <laughs> thank you for joining us. And I hope you will tune in again for our next show of Ghosts Are Near. God bless. 
Stay safe and good night. Good night. Good night.